so when somebody speaks as an authority, that means speaks as the author. That's all it means. It's a statement for which you, of which you are the author and therefore for which you assume responsibility. That is to speak with authority. And to be original is likewise not to be freaky, but to speak from the origin. That is what Christians mean when they say to speak in the spirit, to have your mouth possessed by the Holy Spirit, as they believe the mouth of Jesus was possessed by the Holy Spirit. So the gospel of Jesus, which of course was hushed up from its inception, was that wake up everybody and find out who you are. Asking that, again in the Gospel of St. John, they, pointing to his disciples, may be one, even as you, Father, and I are one. And when he was accused of blasphemy, the Jews took up stones to stone him, you know. And he said, many good works have I shown you from the Father, and from which of these do you stone me? And they said, for a good work we don't stone you, but for blasphemy, because you being a man make yourself God. Now listen to the reply. He said, is it not written in your law, I have said ye are gods? And if that is what the scripture says, it can't be denied. So why do you tell me I blaspheme because I say I am a son of God? No answer. Because I said I am a son of God. It doesn't say that in your King James translation. It says I am the son of God. And you'll see the the italicized and you will think that that is for emphasis if you don't realize that passages in italics in the King James Bible are interpolations by the translators. In Greek, leaving out the definite article is equivalent of having the indefinite article. We are to you is a son of God, not oios to you. So son of in Hebrew and in Arabic means of the nature of. When we call someone a son of a bitch, we mean bitchy. And so if you call someone a son of God, you mean divine, of the nature of God. As the Nicene Creed subsequently defined it, he is of one substance with the Father. But what happened was that this being blasphemy for the Jews, it became blasphemy for the Christians, for anyone else than Jesus to say it. They said, okay, baby, it was so with you, but there it stops. No more of this business. <laughs> and as a result of that, Jesus was made irrelevant by pedestalization, by being kicked upstairs. <laughs> oh, wow. <laughs> <laughs> In spite of the fact that he said, greater works than these that I do shall you do. Oh no, upstairs with you, baby, because uh, we just can't have that sort of thing going on in a monarchical universe. We are not going to have democracy in the kingdom of heaven. So this is why the gospel is impossible, because we are supposed to follow the example of Christ where he says, for example, be not anxious for the morrow. Do not worry about what you shall eat, what you shall drink, and what you shall wear. God will take care of you. Doesn't he take care of the birds? Don't the flowers grow? And they're wonderful. They're crazy. They're great. What are you worrying about? I've never heard a sermon preached on that. <laughs> never. <laughs> because it's totally subversive. The economy would crash. <laughs> So they say, oh, yes, that's all very well, but he was the boss's son. <laughs> See, he had that colossal advantage. Take up your cross and follow him. Hey, but wait a minute. I don't know I'm going to be resurrected three days later. 
I can't do all those miracles. He had an unfair advantage. So how could you ask us to follow the example of Christ? But supposing he didn't have an unfair advantage. Supposing that what was true about Jesus as a son of God is true of us. Only, only a few of us know it. And we are pretty careful to be quiet about it, <laughs> lest the same thing happen to us as happened to Jesus. <laughs> and indeed, it often does. And you know, you get these people from Arkansas or uh, Texas or uh, anywhere in the Bible Belt who never heard of the Upanishads, and they have this cosmic consciousness experience, and they realize that that's what happened to Jesus. And they say, I'm Jesus, come back. Well, everybody says to them, you aren't Jesus. It's pretty obvious you're not Jesus. You're just, jo you're just Joe Dokes. Well, they say, he says that's what they said about Jesus. <laughs> he has a perfect argument, except they say you're not much of a Jesus. <laughs> they say, uh, all right, if you're Jesus, command that these stones may be made bread. And he says, a wicked and deceitful generation seeketh for a sign, and there shall no sign be given. 